uh, along the lines of opening the door to, you know, Joe's uh, bakery coming in and saying, gee, I need, uh, you know, a 250-foot variance. How's that? Uh, this is unusual uh, because in the town of Farragut with our access ordinance, um, you can tell as soon as you get into the town of Farragut, we don't have all the curb cuts. And uh, the reason there are so many curb cuts in this vicinity is because the rest of the area around here isn't under our jurisdiction. And so there, uh, for example, uh, the auto parts store that's located on the southwest corner of Kingston Pike and Canton Hollow Road, what were you thinking with that access point there, you know, that was at it. So um, this is an, a unique situation uh, because of that. Uh, generally speaking, we don't run into these kind of things. So what we did was when we met with the designer on the front end, we looked at the optimal place for their access points um, with the modifications. Our primary um, concern, obviously, on the Kingston Pike is the Farlow Drive because you do have the potential for head-on collisions, uh, but that will be um, reconfigured to resolve that problem. Traffic light distances uh, between the lights that are proposed and those that are existing. Uh, Traffic signal at the Farragut High School entrance, at the old Kroger entrance, and the traffic signal at Concord Road, that is like right at the bare minimum, and this is actually separated quite a bit from greater than that. I couldn't tell you the exact number of feet, but it is greater. Ruth, just so I understand clearly, uh, the map is up on the screen. Could we go to the... Uh, uh, to the Kingston Pike screen. Okay, so Farlow Road is going to be realigned to the east. Is that correct? Okay, so we're, we're it looks like there's, is that the recycling center that I see uh, coming out directly across from the from the darked out? It will be lined. If that works, David's going to mark it on there. Okay. Something like that to tie in uh, to Farlow to the uh, signal there. So what does that then do to the piece of property that is outlined by your red line that, uh, that is adjacent to Kingston Pike? What does that then become? Well, it's still zone C1, I believe. Uh, it, this is, it's true, it's in the county. Uh, that area is under the power lines. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't restrict, wouldn't change building, per se. Does, it, does it, that existing Farlow Road get cut off? Yeah, it's going to be abandoned. Good. So that's part of it. Uh, well, I guess my question is that that little uh, tract of land adjacent to Kingston Pike, which is bounded by uh, by David's Red Line, the new Farlow Drive, is it going to be? Uh, can it be used for any kind of a business in the future? Is it? Uh... That will be part of the plans that uh, um, the applicant will be preparing with Knox in conjunction with Knox County. Knox County has to approve the plans prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. That's outside of our jurisdiction. That's going to be entirely up to the county. Sure. We certainly hope they don't give a curb cut. That's the whole point of it. What was that again? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my ears are all stopped up, so I'm having a hard time hearing tonight. Okay. I don't have any more questions. I had uh, a related question. I had that down as well as what uh, Alderman Markley was talking about. I just was curious, just to clarify again, the access to the recycling point. Uh, as someone who would look at this map and say, gee, are you still going to be able to get there from point A to point yeah, B? Yeah, David shows that as being a closed loop, but in reality, that's going to be accessing the site. We'll get a real nice, hard paved, uh, a real street probably with curb and gutter in there. And <laughs> everything that would be that my access. guess, but I will defer <coughs> to Knox County on that one. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, that will be a Knox County project to, to work out the agreement with the property owner to get on the property and then build the build the road. So, actually, this is one of those examples of where this really is a win-win because you're actually enhancing access to that whole south side of Kingston Pike. Um, as you all know, getting out in that area is challenging, and uh, you certainly don't want to turn left on a regular basis. Uh, so I think this will this will really be a good thing in the long term. It'll be it's kind of like every time we talk about construction, it won't be pretty at first, but it'll get there. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a great little town. When we get it done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so need a motion. I move to approve the variance request for the proposed driveway on Level Road and the proposed driveway on Kingston Pike and relocation of Farlow Road. Drive. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next item is consider appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals applicant Ron Williams. Ron Williams has applied for the vacancy on the Board of Zoning Appeals and staff recommends approval of Ron Williams' appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals to fill the vacant seat. I move that we appoint Ron Williams to this committee. Second. All in, all in favor say aye. 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 And I think he will make a good BZA member. Okay. Moving on. Town Administrator's report. Mayor, the only thing I have to report, we've already talked about it, is the uh, new Sentinel Golf Tournament here at the Fox Inn and Farragut will be August 22nd through the 28th. And we'll have probably around 40,000 people coming to the event that week. So uh, we're certainly excited about it and are working with the golf tournament and, and helping in any way we can. So anyway, we, uh, we appreciate that. And of, sort, of course, we are also uh, sponsors of the event. So I think it's going to be a great event. Got a couple of big names in it uh, that they mentioned before with John Daly and Boo Weekly. So they'll have even more PGA guys show up in the next week when they find out uh, kind of how their schedules work out. So uh, anyway, it should be a good week. That's all I have tonight. Good. Assistant Town Administrator's report. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Okay. Engineer's report. Uh, Recorder's report. I have one invoice tonight for your approval. It's for Kramer Raisin for $17,340. And uh, we need approval. I move for approval of this bill. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And attorney's report. I don't have a report tonight, but I would like to to say one thing, and that is that uh, I and the other members of my firm appreciate the action of the board in naming the rotunda for David Rogers, um, for obvious reasons. And just want to thank you all for that. Well, you had a part in it, so we thank you, too. And I think with that, we are adjourned. To our beer board meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, we are adjourned for this meeting. Correct. In the absence of the uh, beer board chair, uh, Alderman Honkin, uh, I am the uh, vice chair. <laughs> we have uh, an item before us on the uh, beer board agenda. And uh, I would ask um, um, Madam Recorder to explain that a bit. I understand there is some... Uh, uh, some other issues involving the uh, the ownership and how we can discuss these. Actually, what this item is, is it's three individual restaurants that are going to be at the public market, but they're going to be operated by one group. So our ordinance doesn't allow for one application for all three of those for all three of those restaurants. So we had to do three separate ones. So, um, of course, the purpose of this item is to prove an on-premise beer permit for the Smokehouse Chicken and Barbecue, Angelina's Pizza and Pasta, and Pablo's Mexican Grill, which are all three located at 11221 Outlet Drive in the public market. And staff recommends approval of the on-premise beer permit for those three, subject to each of the restaurants obtaining a certificate, uh, certificate of occupancy. So what that means is basically one restaurant could get a certificate of occupancy and the other two couldn't. But just depending on which ones get that certificate of occupancy per first, those will be the ones that get the beer permit. So it'll be as to, I don't think any of them have it at the moment, but I think 
there's inspection scheduled for tomorrow so those are ready so just whenever they get those certificate occupancy occupancies they can also pick up the beer permit as well and the applicant is here tonight if there are any questions all of the other paperwork in order mm -hmm. yes sir. The sheriff's department mm -hmm. okay any uh, questions of the applicant or other comments <laughs> Looking around, no, it's not. <laughs> That's great that you're going to have three, three different places there. That's really good. Well, we look forward to having you here in our community. What's the name of the LLC on, on the application? Looks like V O L C U E. Okay. Thank you. Types of food, too. <laughs> so that's good. Oh, oh really? which one is the smokehouse? All three. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, okay. Huh. Oh, and they have great food. So it's exciting. Gosh, we're going to have so well, many well, nice I'm places Well, I'm sure you're going to do well. Yes, we hope. Join us. So move. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Is there any other uh, items on the agenda, Madam Recorder? Yes, sir. On this one. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and the beer board is now adjourned. Hello.